This is my husband, Nicholas. He just turned 34 years old on March 29th. We have three boys together. Our oldest is Caden. Our middle child is Carter. And the baby of the family is Lincoln. They are my world. And exactly 46 days ago, our world changed forever. On March 12th of 2019, I took my husband to the emergency room. He had been experiencing headaches for approximately two weeks. He went to his primary doctor who didn't suspect anything major and diagnosed him with oxalamic migraines. Sent him home with some Finnergan to help him with the nausea he was experiencing and told him to follow up in a week if they were better. Over the weekend, I was concerned that not enough had been done to address his headaches because they were so persistent and they were very bad. They had essentially incapacitated him. He had no um, real history of migraines. And I spoke with a friend of ours who is a nurse practitioner, um, and he was also concerned that just to be safe, we should get a scan done. Also on that weekend, I spoke with my mother and law let me know about a little family history that I wasn't aware of. His paternal grandmother passed away at around the age of mid-60s from a brain tumor that started as a headache that wouldn't go away. So this put me a little bit more on alert and I decided to really be persistent the following week with getting him a scan just to make sure everything was fine. So on Monday, he tried to contact his doctor and didn't really get anywhere. On Tuesday, he was experiencing one of the worst days of the symptoms from his headache. So not just a headache, but also extreme nausea, vomiting, um, and he had blurred vision on his left eye. He came home from work, it was about 11.30, and I called his doctor and requested an immediate MRI. After two or three hours of not hearing back, I decided just to take him to the emergency room. And that's where they did a CT scan and revealed to us that he had a rather large mass um, in his right frontal lobe. Even as I talk about it now, it, it feels like that moment didn't, couldn't have been real. It couldn't have actually happened. I knew that it may not be cancer, but I also knew that my husband had a mass, and he described it as the size of an orange growing inside of his brain, putting so much pressure on his brain that I knew that that meant he would need surgery. And that, at that point, that was the scariest thing for me, was that my husband would need brain surgery. Later that night, a neurosurgeon came to speak with us while we were still in the emergency room, to let us know that he had ordered an MRI. Um, we were prepared to find out the details of his surgery, which had already been scheduled for the 14th, so two days after the visit to the emergency room. And instead, we were informed that his MRI revealed additional lesions that gave indication that this was a brain cancer, most likely what they call a glioma. Well, this is probably about four to five centimeters in length and about, about four centimeters in width. So bottom line is a large mass swollen, taking up pretty much the whole frontal lobe. And there's, there's one large mass, but there's some other areas of enhancement. I was very unprepared for his surgeon to walk in the room on the 13th and tell me that they were fairly certain that this was a cancerous mass. On March 14th, he had his brain surgery and, and he did remarkably well. We were given the amazing news that they had resected 90% of his tumor um, and the goal was 75%. So this was far and above what was required to make a difference for his prognosis. While they had done preliminary pathology in the operating room, they were not willing to tell me at that stage what it was, but they did know that it was a glioma. So we were holding our breath just to see him and to hear him talk and to make sure that he knew who we were because one of the obvious concerns and answer is that they are going to not remember or not be themselves anymore. So when he woke up and he was himself, that was 
and that was the biggest relief. He was in the ICU for two days, and then he went to a regular floor for two days. We went home on March 18th, and he continued his recovery there. So we got the pathology results back while we were in our hometown in Georgia, and they came back as grade three anaplastic astrocytoma. That it's not the worst one, but it's certainly not the best one. It's rated on a one to four scale. We were at that point assuming, based off of what the neurosurgeons were telling us, that this was actually a grade four glioblastoma. So finding out that it was a grade three was a huge relief. This took us from a diagnosis that was uh, very grim to a diagnosis that was eight to 10 years. We found out while I was in the hospital that our city in Georgia does not have neuro-oncology hospitals. And I found MD Anderson in Houston, Texas, but that um, they were in network with our insurance. And the more I researched MD Anderson, the better I felt. So MD Anderson is the nation's number one cancer institute. We, um, we ended up feeling very comfortable here. And that kind of gets you up to date on where we are at now. So right now we're in Houston, and we've been here since April the 2nd. Today is April 27th, so we've been here 25 days. The experience of being here has been a whirlwind. So our first appointment on the 2nd, our neuro-oncologist walked into the room and informed us that Nicholas does in fact have grade 4 glioblastoma. This is the worst type of brain cancer of all or it is the highest grade so that means the cells of the tumor are necrosive are aggressive fast growing almost always within 12 months glioblastomas reoccur so even through treatment options they come back and they always come back not always within 12 months but at some point they come back the statistics were grim. Um, outside of MD Anderson, the prognosis is 14 months. And here at MD Anderson, under their care, the prognosis is 22 months, less than two years. And that's not enough time. Eight years wasn't enough time. Really, how do you put a number? what would be enough time with your best friend and your partner and the person that you've made forever plans with. We also found out that the surgery was not anywhere close to the success that we were told. It became clear to us that we were in the right place because these tumors are difficult to understand and to someone who is not used to seeing them, they can be difficult to decipher the actual healthy brain tissue from the tumor itself. The neurosurgeon that we had back home, he took out the worst part of the tumor that he could access. It's what they refer to as the enhancing portion of the tumor. There were two additional lesions, which I referenced when he gave us the news prior to surgery. And they actually were not separate lesions. They were all, it's all one massive tumor. So we found out that his entire right frontal lobe, part of his temporal lobe, just a small part of his temporal lobe, uh, orbis callosum, and the motor strip behind his right frontal lobe have all been affected. They could not touch the motor strip or the corpus callosum. Those two do show enhanced tumors, so the worst parts of the tumor, but they can't access those areas without leaving him with many and severe deficits. So they left that part alone. So since being in Houston, we have gone through a lot and it would be too much to talk through, but I'll tell you where we're at now. So we are three days into his treatment. He is on what's called the standard of care, and that is just the, the basic 
protocol that's followed for everyone with a glioblastoma. Right? He is taking radiation, so every day except weekends and holidays. He is on chemotherapy and it's in pill form. And thankfully, we have been told it is not a super severe type of chemotherapy. Point: He's not experiencing any symptoms, which is huge. There's a few other reasons I decided to make this channel. The first one is because I have been searching for um, for someone who's in my position, who's posted it on YouTube, and I haven't found anything. I found a few like clips from hospitals who have done interviews of families or you know short videos on um, just like a basic account of what a glioblastoma journey had been like for a particular person, but I had not seen daily vlogging or uh, an actual journey of what it really looked like. And that I'm searching for what to expect or what kind of questions to ask about this. It also could be a form of documenting for our family. So one day my children who are 10, 5, and 11 months are going to be old enough to see what this journey truly looked like. And at that point I can share this with them. I think that's enough for now. But I have a lot of other videos coming so just subscribe if you want to. Um, if you're local to the town that we're from in Georgia or if you want to show some support, you can go to teamrenew.com and register to be part of the 5K fun run that our neighborhood has put together. You can also um, donate through their website. I'll put the links down in the description so that they're easy to get to. But um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to do a follow-up video because I do feel like I'm leaving out probably a whole lot of details. Um, so. You know, if you have questions, let me know. I'll try to either answer them or maybe I'll make a follow-up video to this. So, thanks so much. And I'll see you.